the pieces that we're going to play all come from a very interesting time. The first couple of decades of the 20th century, when the whole musical world was desperately looking for a new language, a new way of writing music. Um, there were big movements in this. There was Schoenberg and his 12 tone. There was Stravinsky and his neoclassicism. There was Bartok and Vaughan Williams with the nationalism. Um, but there were also individual composers trying to find their own personal way. And one of those was Sibelius. Um, we're going to play his third symphony, which is actually not one of the better known ones. Uh, three and four and six, a little bit less known. And I think I understand why. The first two symphonies are still great 19th century style constructs. Um, his voice is developing, sure. But with the third symphony, there's a hint of neoclassicism. There's a hint of becoming more intimate, of trying to deny the excesses of romanticism. Uh, and you can really hear him trying to find his way. There's one way in which this is very apparent, which makes the whole thing incredibly fascinating. In a typical symphony, the first thing you do is you lay out your, your material your first theme and your second theme, thereafter you develop them. What he does is he hints, he uses little fragments all the way through the first movement. Um, we are being hinted at these pieces, little fragments of music are whirling around each other and it's not quite sure what's happening. There's a slow movement in the middle which is just very gentle a little nocturne, a little folk dance. Um, it has been said that it, it sometimes feels a little static. And I have, I have heard it said that um, this is because in the land of the midnight sun, things are sometimes a little static. Um, anyway, it's, it's very, very beautiful. Then we have a third movement, which could possibly be seen as a third and fourth welded together and we're back with the fragments of music, we're back with the whirling and the whizzing. Um, and, and you hear these ideas begin to coalesce. It's almost like a, forming a planet. And the last section is a coda, firmly in C major, a chorale, which grows and grows and ends uh, in blazing triumph. And you realize that what Sibelius has done, he's taken us on a journey and that that, that final chorale is actually what the symphony has been about since the beginning. He hasn't presented his material, he's achieved his material. 